Let's take a quick look at some of the tools that are available in Firefox for web developers. We'll start by peeking into Mark Pilgrim's awesome Dive into HTML5 book. I like this old style font he's using here in the heading. What is that? I can right click on the heading and use the new Inspect Element Context menu item to open up our page inspector. It's now very easy to see which element I'm focused on. We've got a toolbar at the bottom to let us work with the elements on the page. I can also see that the element is an H1 tag. I want to find out what font it is, so I want to dive into the styles on the page. I'll pop open the Style Inspector. I can find what I'm looking for by looking through the CSS rules. In this case, I know that I'm looking for a font property, so I'll click over to the Properties panel. There are a lot of properties set here, so I'll just type Font into the search box to quickly find the property I want. Oh, there it is. The font is Essays1743. I can expand this property to see that there's a rule that makes all H1 headings use Essays1743. This is interesting. I wonder what the Font Feature Settings property is all about. When I hover over the property, there's a help icon that appears. If I click that, I'm taken to the MDN page about that CSS property. Further down the page, I can see this great wood carving style drop cap. I wonder how that's done. If I click the Inspect button, I can visually move around the page. Clicking again selects that element for inspection. Oh, I can see from the tag that it's just an image. If I click over to the Rules view, it's easy to spot how that image is formatted. It's floated left with some added margins. What would it look like with bigger margins? I'll enter 20 pixels in both directions. The checkboxes next to the properties make it easy to turn off a property. Let's turn off the float property. By clicking near the trailing brace for the element styles, I can easily add new properties just for this element. Let me change the width. I can't say I've made this page look any better, but it was really easy to experiment with. Now I'm curious about the formatting of that paragraph that this image is part of. On the toolbar, there's a collection of breadcrumbs that trace the path through the document. If I click on the P.F button, I'll select the whole paragraph. What if I'm curious about the next paragraph? I can click and hold the paragraph button to see the sibling elements. There we go. I've moved on to the next paragraph. You can see there's a child element available too. Using these breadcrumbs, I can navigate the whole document. Sometimes, however, I'd like to take a look at the HTML for the page that I'm looking at. There's an HTML button to do that. I can use the HTML view to navigate between the elements on the page. If I double click on an attribute, I can edit its value. Keyboard shortcuts let you toggle any of these tools. While the page inspector is open, I'm free to open the web console. The currently selected element from the page inspector is available as $0. I've made a big enough mess of this page. I'm going to close the page inspector and reload. Now you can see the network requests. What if I want to see just the CSS files that were requested? I can filter using the search box. I can click on a request to get more information. And if I want to see the entire response from the server, I can select Log Request and Response Bodies from the Context menu and Reload. Next, I want to show a unique tool in Firefox, Scratchpad. I get an easy-to-use code editor with syntax highlighting. What makes Scratchpad special are the features of the Execute menu or the Context menu. Select a block of code and then you can Run, Inspect, or Display. All three of those options run the selected JavaScript with access to the page you're looking at. Here, I've written a simple function to hide the images on a page. I select the code and then hit the keyboard shortcut to run it. Scratchpad is also a great tool for Firefox add-on authors if you set the devtools.chrome.enabled preference to true. And that's it for this peek at the Firefox Web Developer Tools. There are many more web developer tools available for Firefox as add-ons. You can find some great ones, including Firebug, by selecting Get More Tools from the Web Developer menu. The MDN website has more information about our tools, and all of this is open source. We'd love your help and your feedback. I'm Kevin Dangor. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy using these new features.